Boeing has received FAA authorization to resume their 737 MAX operations, and the stock price has jumped like 50% in the last few weeks. Is it time to buy? Welcome back to the channel family. My name is Trey, getting in touch with you from Japan. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at Boeing. For those who've been longtime followers, you know that mostly I talk about stocks and investing, but I also share a lot about life in Japan, how we've grown our small business from 200 bucks to a million bucks, and we've moved that all to another channel. I'll link that right up here. If you're interested in looking at that, or if you wanna keep following those things, this channel will be primarily focused on stocks and investing going forward. Speaking of investing, if you want a bunch of free stocks, Use the link down below to sign up to Webull where you can get four free stocks valued up to $3,700 by depositing hundred bucks or more. That will also help us to continue to provide good videos like this for you going into the future. So we've been looking on this channel recently at a lot of different types of stocks, uh, many of whom are just beaten down by the pandemic. But when you stop to think about stocks that have just been like clobbered, that get like zero love in the last couple of years, who else comes to mind than Boeing? Last year, there were two big accidents with their 737 MAX planes, killing more than 300 people. That caused the stock price to drop down a little bit, but then March and the pandemic struck and then things just fell apart. As you know, tourism, travel and all that fell apart. Airlines are in like huge duress so not a lot of people are buying planes. But what you might not know is that Boeing's uh, commercial airline portion of their business, even though it used to be the big main kind of backbone of the business, doesn't actually make up that dominating of a portion of the business. So today I wanted to take a look at some of those other segments, um, where we are right now after the third quarter earnings report and some opportunities that we might have for the company going forward here. First, let's take a look at the stock chart. Let's look at the five-year price chart. Here we can see that the price has finally started to rebound a bit, up to about 217 where we currently stand, after its 52-week high of about 374. Going back even earlier in 2019, you can see it was almost 450. Just so you know, when I'm buying stocks, I think of myself as an owner of the company, so I like to know a little bit of the history of the company as well as some of their fundamentals and kind of like the way they started and what else they're doing rather than just like you know a shiny sparkly positive optimistic news headline or something like that so boeing was started more than 100 years ago and has grown into being what was for many years the world's largest airline but recently has slipped down to number two behind european competitor airbus interesting fact my buddy was a pilot actually for numerous different airlines, mostly in the Middle East, flying internationally and stuff like that. And one of the things he was telling me about when you're flying a Boeing versus flying an Airbus, like it just feels so solid, it feels so responsive, it feels so safe. And a lot of pilots are just kind of like, if it ain't a Boeing, I ain't going bro. And so Boeing has been known in the industry for a very long time as being like, you know, the Lexus, the gold standard of planes. These two big accidents that we had in 2019 were a huge black scar on Boeing's uh, safety and reliability reputation, but by and large, Boeing is very much known for being super premium. But they're also heavily involved and invested in the defense industry, as well as space and security too. And since airplanes start at like $100 million, um, they also have a big capital portion of their business that helps airlines and other clients figure out how to pay for these airplanes. Let's take a look at the revenue and margin figures for each of these three main big segments. First, here are the 2020 and 2019 revenue and margin figures for the defense, space, and security portion of the business. Things haven't changed much as the commercial segment is completely separate. We'll get into some more details on this shortly, but basically it looks like it's only dipped by $0.2 billion. Second, we have global services. Um, they have been impacted heavily by the pandemic. Uh, these services include government services like maintenance and training programs for their various vehicles and also things like the F-15 EX, which is a super sweet fighter jet they just sold eight of to the Pentagon for $1.1 billion. That's a sweet price tag. Check it out. The revenues have dipped, but not super outlandishly from $4.7 billion down to $3.7 billion though the margins have almost halved. Then finally, moving on to the commercial airplane segment, which has obviously been hit the hardest, um, we see a larger drop in revenues and super negative operating margins as well. From 8.2 billion in revenues last year 
down to 3.6, so more than half. So this gives you a portion of how Boeing as a whole is made up um, for this quarter, the third quarter. The commercial airline portion of the business was like by far the smallest. But back in the past when things were normal, it made up a bigger portion than either of the other two segments. So let's dive deeper into the commercial airline segment, especially 737 MAX. Since the 737's introduction in 1967, it sold more than 9,000 planes, making it by far the top selling commercial airliner in history. It's made up of like numerous different models and even the new 737 MAX has a bunch of different models and those are basically seating configurations and things like that. The 737 MAX is really well known in the industry and has actually racked up a lot of pre-orders from people over the last couple of years because it takes Boeing's really high quality standards and adds sweet new winglets, which are how the wings, you know, curve up on the end, helping to improve efficiency. Also modifications to like the chassis and the airframe, as well as engine changes too. And those all add up to be about a 19% efficiency improvement, which is like huge when you're flying hundreds of thousands of miles every single year. And that is like the core of your business as an airline. Apparently Boeing had already received 4,932 orders for new 737 MAX planes before the end of 2019. Multiply that by at least $100 million per plane and it ends up being like a mind-bogglingly huge revenue figure. It turns out the backlog is currently $313 billion. As you know, you can't just crank out planes like you crank out, I don't know, what do you crank out, crank out stuff quickly? You don't crank out planes that quickly. And as a result, Boeing doesn't often provide charts and statistics on a year by year basis actually. They like to take a step back and look at 10 year segments. And we'll get into some of those charts here in a minute. But that $313 billion backlog of orders is going to take years, especially as they're going to be taking steps in these coming years to be resuming full employment numbers and staffing numbers and their suppliers and supply chain kind of get back up off their feet and then they'll be able to start cranking out planes a little bit more rapidly. The two 737 MAX crashes back in March of 2019 were due to a faulty MCAS system. Basically I think it helps to control the plane when things are getting bumpy or when they're declining and the system just took over and the pilot couldn't even fix anything. And that's not just like one little part had a little error you step back and you look at the way Boeing has been operating and management is involved and how uh, engineers can give feedback to their management and all these different things. And this has caused a bunch of like government intervention and public backlash, forcing the entire company to figure out how they can restructure things, optimizing communication, removing bureaucracy and smoothing out the whole process, which ultimately I think has ended up helping Boeing to really like slim down the way they work on things and the way they develop new products. Before the two accidents, they had already delivered 387 of these planes, um, which were stopped from service. Boeing is now in the process of fixing and repairing and upgrading all of them so that going forward, they should have a spotless record again. Here's a chart Boeing has provided that show a little bit of the financial steps that they took after things really went haywire earlier in the year. Some of the highlights include cutting off repurchasing of shares as well as dividends. Um, they had two rounds of voluntary layoffs, which is basically saying like, hey guys, we're in trouble now. I know we've promised to hire you for the rest of your life, but it would really help us out if you could like retire early. So we'll give you a package to help you do that. But that package ends up being much less than it would cost the company to keep hiring that person for the next 10 or 20 years or whatever it ends up being. And in April of this year, they also offered a $25 billion bond, which they used to shore up their accounts. And it was also noted and very clear by the CEO of Boeing that they were super uncomfortable with any kind of government intervention coming in, causing Boeing to have to give up equity to the government. They didn't want to be like partially a government company. And so they wanted to just keep it like straight up public by offering a bond, which gets them a bunch of cash, which they can use to get through the tough months. Going into a further look at how they streamlined the organization and realigned things to simplify, um, here's another chart they provided with some of the major points including consolidating production in South Carolina, implementing virtual workplaces to minimize office footprints, reducing bureaucracy and staffing in general, 
and optimizing supply chain transport, warehousing, and logistics. And again, they also mentioned that they're taking tangible steps to make it culturally okay for engineers to be like, hey, this thing isn't correct. Hey boss, we need to fix this. Whereas that maybe wasn't really kind of part of the culture leading to what ended up, you know, causing these accidents last year. Another really interesting thing to note is that designing and building and making an airplane, just one airplane from scratch, is like a 10 year process. It can be done in a couple years shorter than that, but the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, needs to be really heavily involved to like double and triple check everything. And even inside Boeing, there are more than 1,500 people whose job it is just to make sure everything is done properly to meet the FAA's expectation. And so in this case with the 737 MAX, after the grounding, the FAA has been like really, really watching the whole process. Boeing has revamped, solved all the problems, ironed out all the kinks, and now the FAA has given them the go ahead. So they're gonna be fixing up all the ones that were just on hold sitting in warehouses, as well as the ones that were already given out and have changed their systems for production going forward as well. So the FAA has given them the go ahead. So we're going to see revenues picking back up again, and we're going to see that kind of sterling image associated with Boeing picking back up, and probably in a few years, you're not really gonna even think too much about how slaughtered the stock price got during this year. Another crazy thing I learned about studying Boeing was that their supply chain is made up of 13,000 companies. So for example, if I'm making a car, I'm not going to design every single little piece and clip and button and tire and all that stuff. And even today, every single auto manufacturer outsources tires to big tire manufacturers like Yokohama and Dunlop and Bridgestone and these kinds of companies. And in the same way, Boeing, though they're doing kind of like the big major stuff, their supply chain is made up of 13,000 companies. And so when Boeing had to stop selling 737 Maxes, if they also just stopped making them, they would send this huge shockwave through 13,000 companies all over the US, maybe even Canada and Mexico and other countries. And that could cause this tidal wave of bankruptcies and foreclosures and stuff like that. And so during this dark time, Boeing has continued to be making 737 Maxes even though they weren't able to sell them and release them. This is actually super awesome for America and society in general, um, but this huge complex supply chain also makes up a big source of moat for Boeing. And speaking of moat, like being one of the main two aircraft creators in the world, like you're not really gonna ever see somebody just popping up out of the blue and becoming competition for Boeing in commercial real estate. Um, when it comes to outer space stuff, they do stuff with NASA, but we're also starting to see a lot of competition from the likes of SpaceX, who is just mind blowing, and hopefully will go public soon so we can all buy stocks in them. Another note is that China and Russia also produce aircraft, but the FAA are not down with buying Chinese or Russian planes, so they're not going to be competition on the horizon. And as a result of that, they probably won't ever get to the same kind of levels as Airbus and Boeing. So now that we kind of have an understanding of all the drama and kind of what Boeing does, let's take a look at some of the financials. But one of the really tricky things, once again, is that you need to be looking at these 10 year kind of periods because even making a plane takes months, you know? And so looking at the typical charts that we always look at where it's like month to month or quarter over quarter are, is like not super ultra helpful. Um, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time looking at like quarter over quarter revenue gains or things like that, but Boeing has provided some charts and we do have some hyper charts to look at here in a minute too. Check out this chart provided by Boeing on new airplane deliveries. The left one is the 10 year outlook, light blue being the prior airplane delivery expectation, um, and the dark blue one being the current, which means it's gone down by 11% as a result of all of the chaos in the last couple of years. Zooming out even more to the 20 year chart on the right side, you see that it's only down by about 2%. So even though the drama with the pandemic and these accidents has been tremendously impactful right now for these few months for the whole industry and the whole world, zooming out to the 20 year chart, it looks like it's only gonna be a blip on the radar according to their kind of expectations and calculations for the future. Here's another way to look at it. For the 10 year market serve, they have the three different segments here, defense, services, and commercial split up almost evenly 
the entire revenue of all of those together is $8.5 trillion over 10 years. And they're saying over 10 years, it's only probably gone down about $200 billion. Relatively speaking, $200 billion is like pretty not a big deal for Boeing. When we look at the stock price and we see that the stock prices went down like two thirds, take a step back and look at this, like over 10 years, it's going to be just a little bit of their revenues. And so does that really merit that? Now, if you're in this stock for the long term, that's the way you can look at things. If you're trying to get into the stock just to make a quick gain or a quick buck, um, it might be a little bit more tricky. You might see some more bumps in the road, but I'll get into my thoughts a little bit more in depth here in a sec. I also wanted to take a look at a hyper chart on the net income. As you can see it evolving over the years, you can see the largest dips right after the accidents in 2019, followed immediately by a jump back up. And then, you know, once again, the pandemic starting up. Quarter two was really terrible. We're starting to see that red bar get smaller and smaller as we move forward. And I think with a vaccine on a horizon, as well as this allowance by the FAA to resume 737 MAX production and sales, we're gonna see that red bar swinging back up into the positive in the coming quarters. I also wanted to take a look at the 10Q real quick. Um, down here at the very bottom, we see long-term debt, which has jumped up big time uh, since last year. And again, there's so many different factors that contribute to that. I don't think it's a huge red flag right now. It's just something to know if you're going to become an owner of this business. But I see it as one of those necessary evils required to get through these dark times. All that being said, the backlog of max planes that they have, $313 billion, is way more than enough to get through that long-term debt situation. I did also wanna mention that the market cap of Boeing currently sits at about 120 billion bucks, but the enterprise value, a new term for this channel, which is a more comprehensive alternative to the market cap because it includes short and long-term debts as well as cash holdings, sits at 153 billion. Sometimes seeing significant gaps between the enterprise value and the market cap can give you kind of a signal to spot deals in the market even after the big market price run up in the last few weeks. Finally, I also wanted to touch on the statement of cash flows, highlighted down towards the bottom that the cash and cash equivalents sit at about $10 billion. And that's a good figure to see, but keep in mind that they have huge amounts of debt. But all that being said, this company is way too important not only for the American economy, but also for America's military presence around the world. I think even regardless of a president change coming up on the horizon, Boeing is just such a big part of American defense, as well as being able to supply a high quality defensive equipment for a bunch of our allies too, that the American government is not going to let Boeing even go close to bankruptcy or any kind of emergency situation like that. I also wanted to mention here, a hyper chart showing the number of outstanding shares. I mentioned earlier that they did pause share buybacks a little while ago as one of those you know, evasive maneuvers to keep a hold on the finances of the company, but generally with share buybacks, the company is buying back outstanding shares from people holding the stocks, and that puts like an artificial pressure on the stock price to keep going up. That's been on hold for a little while, but it's probably safe to assume that once revenues start to roll and once cash flows get moving again, that will resume and probably a dividend will eventually be re-implemented again in the future. So what are your thoughts on the company? Do you like the company? Are you already in the company? And did you get to ride that wave up 50% in the last few weeks? I was in Boeing a while ago after the crash and have since gotten out regrettably now. But after doing kind of this look at the company, like I'm feeling a little bit more reassured in it. The stock price isn't cheap, so it's hard to run out and buy a huge you know, portion of Boeing stocks, but I'm pretty comfortable to say that I wouldn't be surprised if it goes up you know, 30, 40, 50% in the coming quarters and years. And if you're looking for a little bit of diversification away from a lot of the really dramatic tech stocks or other more volatile segments of the market, this could be one of those ways that you could grab a little bit more stability. I'm pretty interested in the stock. I might grab a few shares here and there and just be kind of like dollar cost averaging over the months. It's not gonna be like really high on my priority list, um, but I give you the thumbs up if you're gonna grab some. Don't expect it to double in a few weeks or anything like that. Um, I'm actually pretty surprised that we did see this huge run up in the last few weeks after the FAA announcement, but we, and we could see more movement like that in the coming weeks. But again, keep in mind, stock price has been super duper like volatile in the last few weeks. 
um, with news of the vaccine and the president change and all this stuff on the horizon. At the same time, we're also seeing uh, the pandemic infection rates going up and a lot of other uncertainty around the world. So things in general could hit a correction sometime soon. I don't think Boeing would be hit as hard as a lot of the other really high-flying tech stocks, probably Tesla and the EV bubble with all, Neo and all these other companies would be hit harder than companies like Boeing would in that event. All that being said, please leave a comment down below. I'd be interested to hear what you're doing with Boeing or how it fits into your long-term strategy. Just to give you a sneak peek into what's coming, I'm working on a Palantir video. I've been getting a lot of requests on Palantir, my thoughts on them, who they are, what to expect. We know Palantir has been going crazy as well in the last few weeks with big, big gains, but they seem to be a little bit of a black box, kind of like, hey, there's a lot of growth, but nobody really knows what they're doing but it's going up, so let's just buy it kind of thing. So gonna take a look at pounds here, hopefully, as well as the regular stock news and stuff like that. Thank you guys very much for your time once again. Love you guys and have a great week.